In the recent gameplay presentation of upcoming space exploration RPG Starfield, the game's publisher, Bethesda, showed a trailer which spoke of the depth of storytelling typical of Bethesda games and then cut to a human skeleton. It allows us to add that touch of environmental storytelling that Bethesda is known for. This, as anyone who's played a Fallout will know, is the primary medium of Bethesda storytelling. Skeletons posed in such a way to communicate the significant or tragic thing its owner was doing when they died. But it's not always tragic, heartbreaking skeletons you find. In fact, some of these storytelling skeletons are of people who died in the most embarrassing circumstances possible, which are now bonally immortalized for all eternity. See for yourself with these seven most embarrassing storytelling skeletons in Bethesda games and subscribe for more Starfield from outside Xbox. A lot of performers struggle when they're coming up with bad performances and hostile crowds, but for most of them these ordeals are easily forgotten. It's a whole different story if you suddenly die during your terrible performance, however, especially if your storytelling skeleton remains trapped in place for the rest of time, as happened to this unfortunate entry on our list. Found in the Southie Speakeasy, located in the basement of Joe's Spucky's Sandwich Shop, this poor schmo was a singer or possibly a comedian or some other kind of entertainer who was so bad at their job they were pelted with tomatoes. And then, as if that wasn't bad enough, a bunch of atom bombs went off, everyone died, and they were immortalized like this forever. Brings new meaning to Knock 'em Dead. The absolute nightmare, of course, would be to suddenly die doing something deeply embarrassing or personally shameful, such as you become skeletonized in situ and are stuck like that for all time. Well, that's what happened to the weirdos that you find hanging out in the Concord Speakeasy in Fallout 4, who seemed to have quite the party set up before things started to get fatally radioactive. First up is this fella, who seems to have been enjoying a few brews, as well as the company of a store mannequin, which certainly ranks high among the positions you don't want your skeleton to be in forever after you've gone. Worse than that is the fella in the bathroom, who according to our amateur crime scene analysis, was naked, surrounded by mannequins wielding machetes and plungers, and most bafflingly, his head had been removed and placed in the toilet. When Bethesda is talking about rich storytelling, this is what they're talking about. And it's hard to disagree. Again, what you get up to in private is none of my business, unless you somehow become a skeleton during it, and then I encounter that skeleton in the course of a 70-hour RPG. Then, it is very much my business. Which is why I feel confident saying that I'm pretty sure the pre-skeletons who got involved in some light spanking in an outhouse probably aren't super jazzed that their skeletons are still here decades later, in the same pose, on Fallout 4's Spectacle Island, which, I mean, you can unlock it as a settlement, folks, people are going to be coming here. Maybe I'll just close the door. You're welcome, skeletons. There's a lot going on here, so it's probably easiest if I just summarize everything we know about this particular skeletal tableau you can find in the Presidential Utility Tunnel in Fallout 3. It seems like the skeleton's owner was trying to ramp a motorbike over a car in an extremely cramped enclosed space, and instead of that happening, what happened is that they got their head and neck caught in a light, the motorbike carried onwards and crashed, and then their legs fell off. Normally this would just be a tragic story for the news, but the fact that the bombs fell moments later means that no one ever came down here to clear the body away, and so this poor wannabe stuntman has remained trapped here ever since, frozen in time at the moment of their greatest, coolest failure. Looks like it's up to me to put them back together and give them some dignity. Whoops, no, okay, that's made it worse. Can I get the legs back up? You know what, this is too much like hard work. Dog meat, he's all yours. While all of these storytelling skeletons present poignant backstories, some are considerably harder to decipher than others. For example, inside the ruined citadel in Fallout 3, we find this skeleton, who appears to have died… uh, uh well, see for yourself. So what happened here? Was he sitting down and a fan fell off a shelf onto his crotch? Was he attempting to cool his groin? Was it… Was it a sex thing? Investigating the nearby terminal reveals that this desk belonged to a Harry Callahan, the full name of Clint Eastwood character Dirty Harry, and the safe next to the desk contains a Magnum revolver, the signature weapon of Dirty Harry. So, judging by the name, I'd say definitely a sex thing.
They don't call him Dirty Harry for nothing. And speaking of fans, we have this person, who was such a fan of the Indiana Jones films that they turned to them in their hour of greatest need. I refer to the storytelling skeleton that only appears if you take the Wild Wasteland perk in Fallout New Vegas, a perk which makes weird stuff happen, like you getting attacked by a gang of old ladies. One of the earliest such Wild Wasteland encounters you'll discover is this refrigerator, near the town in which you start the game, which contains a skeleton, a fedora, and an implied tale of someone whose mind, when faced with an impending atomic blast, went straight to that scene from Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, where Indy survives a similar situation by climbing into a fridge. As you can see, it didn't work out for them. Unfortunate, yes, but also embarrassing, because, come on, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? That movie was terrible. I know you're dead and all, but seriously. As we all know, in the post-apocalypse of Fallout 4, money is basically worthless. Instead, everyone uses bottle caps, or barters, or just steal stuff because they're wearing a suit of power armor. Who's going to stop them? But the memo didn't reach these two storytelling skeletons, who have been immortalised, hands around each other's throats, fighting over a safe which, when cracked, is revealed to contain a bit of money, some documents, and a gun. However, that's not what's weird and embarrassing about this. What's weird and embarrassing about it is that while one of the skeletons is still wearing the tattered remains of their clothes, the other isn't, meaning that when this frantic strangling session took place, one of the participants was completely naked for some reason. Maybe they needed the money to buy clothes. Makes you think. Those were the seven most embarrassing storytelling skeletons to be found in Bethesda games. Got any other favourite bony backstories we missed? Sound off in the comments, and make sure you're subscribed to Outside Xbox for more Starfield stuff coming your way soon. Thanks for watching.